It was 13 years ago in Joplin, Missouri, where one of the deadliest U.S. tornadoes struck. It lasted 38 minutes and tragically killed 158 people in 2011. James Ledoux is acting director of the federal government's National uh, Windstorm Impact Reduction Program. Mr. Ledoux, thank you so much for joining us. And before we get into the questions, uh, I'm sure when you see damage like we've seen in Greenfield and damage that we've seen so far this year brings back a lot of memories to what we saw in Joplin. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, this uh, storm here has got uh, a lot of similarities to yeah. other very strong tornadoes. Yeah. And uh, nothing like Joplin. Now, that was the deadliest tornado since the 1950s. But, yeah, it uh, was. Yeah, it's bad enough. Well, let, let's talk about that. Why was the Joplin tornado uh, so destructive? And what have we learned since 2011? Boy, there's so many angles to that because uh, yeah. the, the tornado is incredibly destructive because one thing is, is that it developed in uh, heavy rain. So it was hidden to the people, the populace there. They had limited time to actually take cover. So the fatality rates were high, not only because of uh, that, but also because the tornado just overwhelmed the construction that was there in the area. Uh, most of those houses would be flattened uh, with the winds that uh, the Joplin tornado provided. And uh, when that happens, then the fatality rate starts going up. Um, you know, typically a flattened house means that, you know, you could have potentially, uh, you know, most likely serious injuries, uh, you know, with uh, what we've seen in past studies, you know, something like on the order of greater than 1% of all households that are occupied would have fatalities. That's as high as it gets uh, that we've seen in tornadoes. And, uh, and certainly uh, we've, we've seen similar before that, but given the width of that tornado and that it maxed out right over the town. Uh, mm. That was just everything putting together to create a mass disaster situation, a mass casualty situation. Just last week, buildings in downtown Houston were hit with straight line winds of 100 miles per hour. Uh, how rare is that? And can many buildings withstand that force? Yeah, so as we see, uh, you know, we saw that in Houston with the, mm -hmm. what we call it the ratio now. Right. Is that when we get 100 mile per hour plus winds, uh, the glazing on high rise buildings often suffers from flying debris. And I think we saw that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, windows that were blown out. Um, sometimes uh, flying debris comes from the streets, sometimes it comes from uh, gravel rooftops. And uh, so we start seeing that. And the last time we saw such uh, destruction there in Houston in downtown was from Hurricane Allen in 1983. I believe that was 1983. Uh, so that does happen, but it's kind of rare. Uh, most places, uh, well, let's say even in the worst areas that are climatologically impacted by the ratios, that's from, let's say, Iowa to Ohio throughout the Midwest, uh, they may see maybe two derechos a year. Yeah. Down in Houston, much more rare, maybe yeah. one every four to five years uh, at most. And I don't think they've seen one like this uh, in, in quite some time. In fact, back since the 80s. With sensors and uh, new technology, are we getting better at knowing and maybe anticipating these wind speeds? Yeah, so we're... We're getting better, uh, you know, with especially with the radar network, detecting mm -hmm. winds as they are occurring. Uh, the what we call the Weather Service radar, the WSR ADAD network that the National Weather Service uh, runs along with well, uh, the Defense Department and FAA. They have added new technologies to that, um, especially much higher resolution and much more frequent updating, uh, maybe down to like one minute. Uh, when we do the super rapid scans uh, in the radar. So we can detect them. For derechos, though, the forecasting is still a challenge. Uh, it's it's getting better, but we tend to to miss some. So, uh, for example, I don't think we're expecting a derecho that morning that Houston got hit. We were expecting severe thunderstorms. I think there was at least an enhanced risk of, of severe thunderstorms, but not to that level. Yeah. All right, James Ledoux, Acting Director of the uh, Federal Government's National Windstorm Impact Reduction Program. Thanks you for joining us here today, sir.